What is the Big Bang Theory? This is the proposal that many billions of years ago, a tiny quantity of very dense matter exploded. As it enlarged and cooled, matter eventually condensed out. Then it collected together to form atoms. These formed into stars, and they collected to form massive groups of stars called galaxies. These galaxies then collected together to form superclusters of galaxies. As the universe continued to expand, the galaxies moved further away from each other. And the further away they were from our galaxy, the faster they were moving. Imagine the universe is like a huge balloon with dust particles inside it. As the balloon expands, every dust particle moves away from its nearest neighbours. And the further particles will be moving very rapidly away from those near the centre. Watch the three coloured galaxies and their relative movement. The Big Bang Theory arose from an observation by Professor Hubble that the further a galaxy was from us, the larger the increase in the wavelength of its light. As a galaxy moves away from us, its light appears to be shifted to the red end of the spectrum. This is known as the redshift of galaxies. The change of the light is because as the galaxy travels away from us, its wavelength is longer. It is redder. The faster the galaxy moves away from us, the greater the redshift of particular lines in their spectrum. From the amount of change, astronomers can tell how fast a particular galaxy is travelling away from us. And Hubble found a relationship between the distance a galaxy is from us and its redshift. From this, they could easily work out how long ago the Big Bang took place. This figure has had many huge changes, but the present figure is 13.7 billion years. Thus, the whole theory depends upon the redshift being an indicator of a galaxy's distance and its speed away from us. But, is this correct? Halton Arp was investigating quasars which are very bright bodies with very large redshifts. So they must be a very long way away from us. But then he found that many of them had a small wisp of material between them and a galaxy, indicating that they were quite close together. The problem for the Big Bang Theory was that the galaxy generally had a very much smaller redshift than the quasar. He found that this was not a coincidence. The number of cases was far more than random chance. One quasar with a high redshift was in front of a galaxy with a much lower redshift. The quasar should have been over 90 times further away than the galaxy. Other galaxies showed a similar connection between a galaxy and a quasar with a huge redshift. The obvious conclusion was that redshift is not due to the speed of recession but due to some other factor. He also found that there was often another quasar on the opposite side of the galaxy, as though the galaxy had expelled two quasars in opposite directions. Furthermore, as the quasar moved away from the galaxy, their redshift reduced and their brightness increased. So there was clear evidence that redshift was not an indicator of speed of recession, and this should have demolished the Big Bang Theory. But what actually happened? It was as if a huge button had been pressed around the world to prevent this evidence gaining credibility in conventional science. Firstly, his telescope time was removed, preventing him from making further observations. Secondly, his papers were not accepted by the main science journals. And in fact, his detractors made vicious comments about his work. Thirdly, 
he was not allowed to use an X-ray map of quasars in his book without permission. Fourthly, the scientists writing papers that supported his views were refused publication. Finally, such was the opposition that these objects were excluded from examination and photos were even cropped to remove them. To have academic freedom he moved to Europe and to bypass these barriers he wrote a book called Quasars, Redshifts and Controversies in which he presented his evidence and how he was subsequently treated by orthodox scientists. In a subsequent book, Seeing Red, he gives his views of the opposition he faced. I give just two quotes. If you take a highly intelligent person and give him the best possible elite education, then you will most likely wind up with an academic who is completely impervious to reality. Science is failing to self-correct. We must understand why in order to fix it. On the first point, I think he is wrong. There is nothing inadequate in the abilities of those who opposed him. The reason for their opposition was that his evidence threatened their Big Bang theory that they had supported for many years. They were well aware that if the Big Bang Theory fell, many carefully constructed speculations and careers would fall with it. And there were even more important theories threatened that we will deal with later. On the second point, the peer review system, ostensibly to remove frivolous or bad articles, is actually used to ensure that only papers that support the present orthodox accepted theories are published. That is why his work was crushed. There are other proofs that falsify the theory. If redshift is a measure of distance, then there should be a straight line correlation between these two measurements. In 1976, Tift accurately measured redshifts and he found that they were in distinct steps of 72 kilometers per second, or half of this value, 36 kilometers per second, or one third, 24 kilometers per second. This showed yet again that redshift was not a measure of recession, but of something else. A team of astronomers is claiming to have observed an object whose existence shatters the underpinnings of the Big Bang theory. The Quasar Group, called Huge LQG, is supposedly so enormous it would comprise roughly 5% of the observable universe. By conventional reasoning, an object of this size simply could not have formed since the theoretical Big Bang explosion. According to lead author Dr. Roger Close, the finding upsets the foundation of everything we do. But as is so often the case with baffling space discoveries, are we being told the complete story? The question that arises from this recent finding of a gigantic quasar cluster, which, according to the headline, shatters long-held theories of space, is that uh, it actually shatters the long-held theory of the Big Bang. But that's not specified. It's just uh, put in general terms because, of course, there is no alternative to the Big Bang theory at present, or at least there isn't, according to conventional science. Of course, the Electric Universe sees all of this as being confirmation of Halton Arp's work of decades ago, where he actually predicted that these highly redshifted objects, the quasars, would appear to be larger and larger and brighter and brighter the higher the redshift, simply because of this idea that the redshift is a measure of the distance. Now, Halton Arp has shown, and the Electric Universe actually expects that quasars are merely faint because they're young. They've just been recently hatched, so to speak, from a parent galaxy, and they're highly redshifted. But they are born from nearby galaxies, so these things are much closer than the 9 billion light years that is specified in the article. The sizes come from the assumption that the distance is proportional to its redshift. Its redshift is 1.27, and the magnitudes of the quasars in it 
range from 18 to 19. There could be some failure ones because the survey arbitrarily cut off at 19. It lies 25 degrees west of the Virgo cluster and the magnitude range of the objects in it are similar to the z equals one quasars that are that halt and arp is associated with the virgo cluster it overlies three messier galaxies m95 m96 and m105 which are a little bit closer than the virgo cluster according to the standard reckoning these quasars are actually ejections from these Messier galaxies at the edge of Virgo. Then this huge group is only 20 million light years long instead of 4 billion. It's 200 times closer than what they think it is, and it's only a half of 1% as big as they think it is. The result of the distances proportional to redshift assumption is that Astronomers are looking at gnats swarming around their heads and thinking that they see fleets of 747s on the horizon. The observational evidence that undermines the distance is proportional to redshift assumption has been known since the 1980s from the work of Paul Narp, who noticed that these high redshift quasars had a statistical and oftentimes a physical association with nearby active galaxies. Standard astronomers have ignored this evidence, and they've backed themselves into not just a corner, but a very long dead end. If redshift is not primarily a measure of distance, then the expanding universe and the Big Bang cosmology are obsolete. The astronomers' observations of huge LQG also challenge the cosmological principle, which theorizes that the universe is homogeneous or the same in all directions. The cosmological principle actually goes back to Newton. It's the assumption, again, there's that assumption, that we don't occupy a unique place in the universe, that at, at sufficiently large scales, the universe will look the same from every point within it. So if this holds up, this would mean that at the largest scale, the universe is not homogeneous, that this clump of matter couldn't have uh, developed from gravity since the Big Bang. Notably absent from media coverage of huge LQG is any meaningful discussion of the predictive success of the astronomer Halton Arp. It really is scandalous that Halton Arp, a noted astronomer of his day, who predicted that this kind of observation would be made, is not even mentioned in the article. And in fact, I've seen no comment anywhere in the news items at all about Halton Arp's work which predicted this kind of finding. You would expect that a finding which goes against what is generally believed and something that is predicted would be headline news and that Halton Arp should be singled out for recognition. Instead of that, we see nothing, silence, and there's waffling about long-held theories of space without saying that the Big Bang theory has actually been disproven.